hello and a very happy rainy day to all of us as uh, because while i'm shooting this video it is raining outside this day also happens to be one of the most important days for all of us this day the 22nd of april is the earth day and this day has takes much more importance as of now because as we can see there are so many problems facing the earth Uh, there was a arctic uh, there was a hole on in the ozone layer above antarctica and now researchers have found that there's another hole which has a mini hole which has come up over the arctic ocean so we can see that the earth right now needs a lot of care and it is on us the more this responsibility lies with us humans the most or the most developed species on the entire earth we have to do or we have to take such steps so as to protect our planet earth the kind of us all of us that we should take a pledge on this day so as to save our planet and also so as to do things so as to reduce everything or all the problems that faces our planet as of today let us take a pledge so as to do such things or let us take a pledge so as to reduce our consumption and also so as to not buy or not do things which are not much needed because what we have to do is save our earth else a day will come when not because of corona virus will be stay inside but we have to stay inside because of the toxic air or the air pollution that will be reaching to such high levels that it will be unsafe for us to go outside and the water will become so polluted that none of the fishes or none of that like animals will be able to live in the waters so we have to save our earth and this pledge and with this pledge let us start our next chapter uh, well, we won't be finishing the entire chapter today because we as you can see that we have a lot of time to stay inside right now and completing an entire chapter in just one session will not be that or it may lead us to running out of chapters after some time so we'll be covering some part of it today and today what uh, i want to start is the chapter of creation well in this picture which has been downloaded from the wikimedia library we can see the relative position of asia with the, the or in relation to the other continents and what we can see over here is that asia covers a very large space on the earth and over here we can see india we can see china over here the world's largest country russia there is something to be kept in mind over here is that russia lies in both the continents in europe as well as in asia but the russian or uh, the european part of russia is not as big as that of uh, the asian part of russia the a very small portion of russia lies in europe the rest of it is in russia i just uh, rest of it is in asia i would just want uh, each one of you to just be familiar with a few countries of this map of asia and also so as to be able to locate or pinpoint countries without having to refer to an atlas or without having to refer to the index page of the atlas when we look at the world map we can see that most of the continents are separated from each other by wide seas or at least in the by narrow seas but if we look at asia and europe europe by the way asia is this we find that europe and asia form a singular mass this singular mass of europe and asia together is called eurasia so we have to keep in mind that the singular mass the singular land mass of europe alongside is asia makes up eurasia it is because both these continents are together they are but at times we may question why do we then call or why don't we call this entire land mass a single continent and not two to and why do we call them as or know them as two different continents the reason is that some cases of or the asian countries and the european countries there is or there are vast distinction between the culture at times religions and also the different languages that is what makes the two different or that is what makes this huge land mass two different continents if we look at the map of asia we can see that there are three important latitudes which got crossed through asia the first one is the arctic circle it is passing mostly through or not mostly through it is passing through russia then we have the tropic of cancer we have to see which countries lie on the tropic of cancer we have saudi arabia we have uae we have oman we have india we have bangladesh we have myanmar we have china and we have taipei and the third important latitude which passes through the continent of asia is the equator the equator passes through 
Now we can see that the equator passes through a few atolls or a few islands of Maldives and through the islands of Indonesia and Borneo. Looking at the map of Asia, we can find that this map of Asia, there are huge number of longitudes passing through the map of Asia. Asia is a huge continent and that is why there are so many longitudes or it encompasses so many longitudes. The, or the continent of Asia stretches from 25th longitude or 25 degrees east to 170 degrees east. That is uh, quite a huge number and that is why Asia has so many different time zones. We have to keep in mind that longitudes are what define time in different countries or the earth if we see has 360 longitudes around it and 360 longitudes make up 24 hours so each longitude or, or 15 degrees of longitude corresponds to one hour or each longitude corresponds to four minutes that is why if we look at asia we have 11 time zones or 11 different time zones or 11 different times which are being followed in the entire continent of asia the standard longitude of India is 82 and a half degrees east which passes through a place called Naini near Alabama. It lies somewhere around Alabama. Of Asia, we can see that Asia is surrounded by a uh, large number of water bodies. We can find that to the eastern side of Asia, we have the North Pacific Ocean. Towards the southern, we have the Indian Ocean. And towards the west, we have the Mediterranean Sea. This part over here is the Mediterranean Sea, also the Black Sea. Now looking at or looking closely at the map, we can find or we can see that. Here lies the Bering Sea and over here is also the Bering Strait. This Bering Strait separates the continent of North America, North America which lies on the other side, North America and Asia. So this part, the Bering Sea, separates North America and Asia. Next we have, looking at the other boundary, we can see that. We have the over here we have the Ural Mountains. These Ural Mountains alongside the Aral Sea over here, the Caspian Sea over here, and also the Ural River, uh, Ural River, these four separate the continent of Asia from the continent of Europe. Over here we can find that the Red Sea, the Red Sea lies over here. The Red Sea and the Isthmus of Suez. These separate the continent of Asia from the continent of Africa. This over here is Africa and the rest is Asia. This is, over here is the Red Sea and over here is the Isthmus of Suez. So the Isthmus of Suez and the Red Sea separate the continent of Asia from the continent of Africa. But this tiny part over here, if it is clear to everyone, I guess, this tiny part, this Isthmus, we have to keep in mind the definition of an isthmus. An isthmus is a narrow piece of or narrow stretch of land which connects two large land masses. So this isthmus over here, the, or this Sinai Peninsula over here, or this isthmus of Suez, this connects the landmass of Africa to the landmass of Asia. Looking at the coastline, coastline refers to those areas or those places of a continent or a country which lies on the coast or which lies near the sea. So looking at the coastline of Asia, we can find that Asia has a huge coastline and the coastline also, we have to keep one thing in mind that coastline increases if there are a large number of islands because as we know that islands are covered with water from all the sides or on all four sides. So if there's an island or if there's a big island for that, it may matter, then there's a huge amount of coastline which is to be covered in that island. So looking at the map of Asia, we can find that there are a huge number of islands. Looking over here in Indonesia, the Indonesian islands, then we have the Japanese islands. There are a huge number of islands. These islands increase the coastline and Asia has the largest or amongst the different continents, the coastline of Asia is the largest or Asia has the longest coastline amongst all the different continents. But looking at the map, we can find that most of the coastline of Asia is smooth. Now, smooth coastline, although it may appear in the map to be a good thing, but smooth coastlines aren't that good for having natural ports. So, in places where there are rough coastlines or there are deeper coastlines, those are the areas best suited to have ports or natural, natural ports. So, Asia does not have that many ports, but yes, there are a few places where the coastline is rough or indented or crooked or at places where the coastline is deep, those areas make very good ports. So Asia does have a few good ports. 
there is one very important feature or there is a one very very important physical feature belonging or lying in between the continent of Asia and in, uh, the continent of North and South America in the Pacific Ocean. This is called the Pacific Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire as in you can see that this area is making a ring of sorts and it lies in the Pacific Ocean. So this is the Pacific Ring of Fire. Pacific Ring of Fire accounts for most of the volcanic activities of the world. This you can see, there are these are the location of the active volcanoes. You can see, you can find that most of the active volcanoes are lying on the islands. This is a very important feature. The we have to keep in mind that volcanic activity is happening below the ocean or volcanic activities when it happens below an ocean it leads to island formation. When the lava moves up and when there is a volcanic ex explosion and as the lava moves up and then it settles down it forms or as the lava cools down we find or uh, newer land masses form those newer land masses gradually with time form different islands. These areas over here, the islands of Japan are volcanic islands, the islands of Philippines, the islands of Indonesia over here, these form volcanic or these are volcanic islands and newer islands are still in the process of being made due to the huge amount of volcanic explosions which keep on happening nearly every day in this Pacific Ring of Fire. It does not mean that all these volcanoes explode nearly every day, but some of these or most of these keep on exploding at, exploding at very regular intervals. That is why this area over here is a region of also a region of active volcanic or active volcanic mountains and also a region of active island formation. So you have to keep in mind the islands of Japan, islands of Philippines, island of Indonesia. These are the volcanic islands and some of some new islands are also coming up in these areas and maybe in the next few thousands or millions of years other newer islands will be found in these areas of the ocean. Thus talking of the different islands which we find in the continent of Asia as I just explained that due to the intense volcanic activities there, is, there are huge number of island formations so Japan is one such island Island and Japan is the country of Japan is not just one island it is made up of, of a group of islands. Next we have Taipei over here, we have Philippine group of islands or the country Philippines which is made up of a number of islands. Over here we can see that Indonesia, Indonesia has huge number of islands and the Indonesian group of islands lie over here. These islands over here, Japan, Philippines, Indonesia, these are islands of volcanic origin. Coming to the Indian part we can see or there are a few islands over here. The island of Sri Lanka is said to be an extension of the mainland of India which over time may have come or may have separated from the mainland of India. Then we have the Lakshadweep Islands. The Lakshadweep Islands are of non-volcanic origin and the Lakshadweep Islands are said to be coral islands or coral reefs. Next we have the Maldives group of islands. These are atolls or small islands. These are also of coral or these are coral uh, reefs. Next we have the Andaman and the Nicobar Islands. The islands of the Nicobar area or Andaman does have Andaman and the but does have an active volcano. So the islands of the Nicobar area are of volcanic origin but the islands of Andaman, the islands of Andaman are said to be the extension of the mountain ranges of Myanmar or the Arakan Yoma mountain range. It is said to be there is a mountain range in Myanmar called the Arakan Yoma. When we do the continent of Asia in detail, the physical features will be coming across this mountain range. So this island of Andha, Andaman group of islands is said to be an extension of this Arakan Yoma group of mountains. I guess we will be leaving till this part today and the rest of the chapter will be covered in the next lecture and also we will be venturing into the physical features of Asia in the next lecture. I hope that every one of us knew this time productively and let us not get bored sitting at home, let us just try out new things, let us keep helping our parents, let us keep helping the elders, let us teach everyone in our home who is not that tech savvy or who does not know how to use or use the different apps of mobile or of the computer, let us teach our elders, the grandparents, our parents at time, at, uh, in some of the cases how to use and how to operate the different uh, infra, the mobile applications and the software and 
let us be a bit productive also on our side let us uh, read novels if novels physical novels are not available let us download them from the internet the ebooks are available in plenty and let us use this time productively and well i hope that every one of us stays safe be safe and let us keep everyone us uh, around everyone around us safe thank you